yeah, I hope you all see the screen. Uh, before starting the, uh, the, uh, the webinar, I would like to uh, make sure that uh, everybody is safe uh, due to this pandemic and uh, everyone has uh, gone through a, a very troublesome period for last year and a half. So I hope uh, everybody uh, safe and uh, healthy to take care of this pandemic, okay? So today's webinar basically what we are going to do is we are talking about execution uh, strategy execution with uh, execution premium approach of Dr. Kaplan and Narton. So uh, the outline is look like this. So we will have the first uh, quick introduction about the methodology just to, uh, to catch up where we are uh, starting. And then the solution driven approach will be given at the high level, okay? So then we will take up of some, some of your questions, uh, recommendations, whatever we have. Okay, please keep on uh, asking questions in the, in the message. So we will take up the questions appropriately, okay? So let, let me start with a quick overview about strategy execution, uh, all is about. So basically what is strategy? Strategy is for any business, uh, for any business or, or, or an organization. It's a, so where it is currently, uh, uh, what is its current situation? And uh, where it wants to uh, go from here, okay? And how you go there is a strategy basically, okay? So there could be multiple options. So how do you select uh, which option is good for you? Uh, and that is, that's how uh, strategy is, is gets executed. So balance scorecard framework is one of the methodology most popular uh, for strategy execution. So it is, uh, uh, it is uh, driven by, uh, it's, a, it's a methodology is uh, extensively practiced and invented by David uh, Norton and Dr. Kaplan, okay? So these people really uh, made this uh, uh, popular framework uh, so matured that every uh, Fortune 500 company directly or indirectly using this framework. So in the balance scorecard, basically we, it, it, it's a tra it uh, translates the strategy uh, into objectives, measures, initiatives, and, uh, uh, and also it gets executed through planning and control processes, okay? Uh, so uh, why balance scorecard approach? The reason is by simply looking at uh, a, a financial statement like profit and loss or balance sheet, it's, we, we don't understand the real value of the organization. So if you see a, a, an example here, it's a little older. However, it will give us an idea what we are talking about. So if you see a classical balance score, uh, balance sheet, you don't really understand what is the value uh, of real organization. So this is an example of Infosys, uh, but, but it's older, 2012. So you see a balance sheet and then uh, uh, you try to assess what is, the, what is the value of the company. In reality, the value of company is $33 billion at that point of time. Uh, and the reason is, there are a lot of uh, intangible assets. Now, these intangible assets need to be considered in your strategy execution. That's the whole idea. So intangible assets includes customer relations, innovation, okay, uh, the services, what you do, and then information technology, whatever, whatever. So these intangible assets need to be included in the strategy execution framework. So that's how the whole uh, balance worker framework is all about. So including the intangible assets, properly into strategy execution, okay? If you see, uh, this is also again a little older, but if you are using balance scorecard as a framework, there is a very high chance of success in the strategy execution, but it does not mean that using balance scorecard will guarantee the strategy execution successfully. It, 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 it's a tool basically, and it's a methodology. It all depends on how the people are getting used to it, how they are using it properly, okay? So it's again a tool. So there are many benefits of using balance scorecard. Uh, so it gives a structure to the strategy and it, 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 is, easy, it is easy to communicate uh, to, to all people about the standard framework, aligns organizations and processes and divisions because almost all the companies work in, in, in the silos, okay? 
So this is, this breaks the silos and uh, makes sure that every every department, every division, and every process is aligned. Okay, and finally, uh, it aligns the people uh, to the process. Uh, it's aligned people to the strategy. That's that's the bottom line actually. The moment you are align your people performance to the strategy, that's fantastic. That's that's where you really uh, attach your strategy execution. Okay. So let me give you uh, an idea about the framework, what we are talking about, just in case uh, if you are not aware, if any, any participant not aware. So basically, uh, it's a six-step stage methodology, execution premium. So first stage, we, we develop a strategy uh, where we talk about mission, vision, values, do the strategy analysis, and then formulate the strategy. The second stage is you need to translate this strategy into actionable terms. So in this uh, translation of the strategy, we talk about uh, uh, the strategy maps. Okay, uh, what is strategy map and themes? We'll talk about a little just in the next slide. So we we just translate it, and make sure that this strategy can be communicated to anybody in the organization. Okay, then it's not only enough uh, for the translation. You need to align the organization, the business units, the support units, the employees, business processes systems, everything should get aligned. And then you need to plan your operations according to your strategies, whatever you have uh, you have done. So key process improvements should be aligned to the strategy, the sales planning, the resource capacity planning, budgeting, everything needs to be aligned to the strategy. And then finally, everything is done only if you do execution properly. The execution will be in two things, uh, two parts. One is the processes. You need to do your business processes properly to execute strategy, and then you need to do your projects. So if you do both projects and processes properly, your strategy gets executed, okay? And uh, you need to keep on uh, monitoring it. If you don't monitor, nothing gets executed, okay? So you need to monitor properly how the strategy is getting executed. So the best thing is to have strategy reviews separately than uh, operational reviews. So strategy review meeting, usually it will happen months, once in a month. So this uh, strategy reviews is very crucial where we talk about the performance of particular objectives, measures, initiatives, and overall organization. Okay. Finally, you need to test and adopt. It's not enough that you have strategy once and then you keep on doing the same thing. No, you need to monitor what is going on in the market, what is happening uh, with the strategy. And uh, uh, so you, you just uh, keep on uh, testing it and uh, you need to adopt whatever uh, modifications you want to do it. So this is the cycle which keep on continuously working for the effective strategy execution. And, and in the center of this, you need to have a robust planning processes, which includes your strategy planning process and also your operations, operational planning process, the budgeting and sales forecasting and all. So this is the framework. This is a comprehensive framework, which you, if you follow, it is it will be very helpful tool for, the, for any organizations to use uh, to do to the to do the strategy execution properly. Okay. Now, uh, Palladium has a framework of uh, assigning the the Hall of Fame. So the, they have a twenty six criteria uh, into five, uh, grouped into five categories. So based on this, uh, some kind of survey kind of activity. So your company can be uh, entered into Hall of Fame uh, for the strategy execution through Balance Scorecard framework approach. Okay. So uh, uh, for the successful balance scorecard framework, there are many things you need to do. I will not talk about all. So basically you need to have a good strategy in place. If you don't have good strategy in place, no matter what you do uh, about the strategy execution, it is not going to yield, give the results. Uh, you need to have a good uh, leadership who are taking the ownership and also driving the strategy execution. And also the line managers and the, the second layer of the team need to be involved in the, in the uh, take the ownership in the strategy execution. And, and moreover, you need to have a key performance indicators, what we call it as a measures. These need to be selected with carefully and then aligned to the objectives. Don't put too many objectives or don't put too, lit, uh, too less uh, objectives. You need, you need to put appropriate measures so that your strategy, you can measure it properly, okay? So, and of course, you need to have the right initiatives uh, to do the strategy execution. Initiatives are the key for strategy execution. If you don't have initiatives, nothing is going to happen, 
okay so finally you need to have the all the alignment process this is ongoing process aligning the business is not something in a one day job it's, it's a continuous process you keep on uh, doing the alignment okay so the rest of things is my favorite actually so uh, all the theory everything is uh, can be easily explained by the rest of the the, uh, the things but these are the uh, very important uh, actions okay in the strategy review meetings you need to take actions so these actions need to be formally managed so this is this is uh, a very important point uh, and balance scorecard is not you should not keep this as a very static uh, uh, methodology you need to be uh, make it little dynamic so you should re be ready to take it in a dynamic approach update your strategy maps and balance scorecards regularly whatever uh, based on your uh, business needs so make it dynamic don't make it very static so if you make it static you know it will be outdated very soon and it will become a big problem if there is any uh, emerging strategies comes into picture okay and you need to automate the data flows because you you we all define measures properly in reality but almost almost always we spend a lot of time in in measuring uh, putting the right data so if you have a good systems in place in the, automate them so that you have a proper measures reported automatically okay and all these strategy documentations everything you need to have a proper repository so that it will not get missed in the if some some resource leave the organization or some new person is coming you need to hand hold him so everything needs to be available as a repository and may we have the one one critical important point is the senior leadership should not work in silos they should work as a team that's very important for the methodology and there are these are the uh, some points where Uh, key challenges like uh, uh, if you don't do you will hear something like this so we are measuring the wrong things too detailed lack of efficient data you see some kind of excuses in the and the eventually the balance scorecard uh, uh, balance scorecard will be just a reporting tool it is not a strategy execution uh, strategy driven tool okay now this is this is an introduction part the, the key part is now so we have our own uh, uh, approach uh do to do the strategy execution the uh, six stage uh, process so we put it in a in a uh, we believe that using the system will help really executing the strategy much better because if you don't have system you know it's always manual it will be people driven then it will be a little complicated to sustain it unless if there is a very serious involvement from the senior executives okay so Uh, our six seven seven step model this is the core of our uh, presentation today so we have seven, we have identified based on our experience that the seven step model will help organizations uh, uh, and using of the right appropriate technology will really drive the strategy execution so here the uh, the steps will be just quickly i'll just let me tell you in the step first step we talk about the assessment of the organization from the strategy point of view and then introduce the balance scorecard as a concept okay more or most of the senior executives knows about the balance scorecard executive uh, balance scorecard uh, framework if it is already balance scorecard is used then it's fantastic you can start directly uh, from there and then you you see what is the strategy planning uh, what is the strategy uh, strategic options the company is exploring and then prepare a balance scorecard based on the uh, measures and targets okay so you do all those uh, balance score cards set up in the step 2 then the step 3 is initiatives so you need to have a, you are uh, every organization have projects so these uh, projects definitely should be strategic initiatives uh, other than uh, your capex kind of initiatives so what about the pmo so the pmo will be integrated in step 3 uh, step 4 alignment of the processes uh, structure people and systems in the step 5 integrating the reporting and uh, strategy review meetings this is one, one of the important because you need to have a good review meetings this is where usually the manual process have a problem okay and automate the process automate all the processes through our uh, through strategy balance scorecard uh, solution so this will help you to automate the processes to make it little easier and finally you need to align risks and other uh, comp other uh, other uh, uh, processes like compliance process safety and security the planning processes and all others need to be aligned to the strategy which are not uh, exclusively mentioned covered by any other uh, solution or something so this will uh, this will help us to 
uh, at least you know you, you, to become a hall of fame or you need to qualify to initiate the hall of fame exercise it is definitely uh, it, it is possible because it's a solution driven approach okay now th this is a quick I, I, this is one of the slide where i will not talk about our product but this is one slide where we talk about the key features of the overall solution uh, we have like a, we can define the corporate uh, strategy maps and balance scorecards is we use strategy maps and balance scorecards the kpis measures the initiatives the strategy and operational review meetings alignment of the strategy and communication and integrate with any any systems so uh, it has a pmo complete uh, enterprise uh, project management office to make sure that the initiatives get executed the risk management part and then compliance okay so personal scorecards is the final part where you align your people so you have a people scorecards and uh, the how to do the evaluation performance measures all can be done in the people scorecard management finally you report organizational performance like as a whole so there are multiple criteria how your overall organization is going to perform as far as the strategy is concerned so this is how we do that okay so now uh, i would like to quickly uh, tell you uh, the approach of step number 1 so uh, in the step number one, uh, the what we do is, so first of all, we assess the current stage, uh, current status, uh, strategy planning process, business planning, performance reporting, structure, and the key people involved. Then how the projects are getting executed. Okay. So we see how these enablers, like people perform the risks and other things are done. And then finally, what are the systems involved in the company uh, for the data flows? So once we have a clear idea about all these, then we, we come up with a balance scorecard implementation approach. Okay. So we do the leadership coaching and then draft the strategy map and balance score. If it is not there, if it is there, just we'll try to align with that. And then initiatives and review meetings. Then to start with, the first step is to do SFO assessment. So I'll talk about SFO assessment in a while. So this is the step one, what we do. Okay. Uh, in the step two, uh, in the step one, this is a classic, uh, if you are seeing the screen, this is a classical balance scorecard implementation approach. Okay. So I, we have a more detailed approach. Uh, how can be done in the same time frame, uh, step by step, and it's a systems driven. So you, you will do it in a systematic way uh, without leaving any, 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 any part which is uh, uh, not taken care of. So we talk about the second part, uh, step number two, the strategy, uh, strategy part, basically the strategy map and uh, balance scorecard execution uh, measures kind of thing. So here, this is where so the starting point is the value gap analysis. Value gap analysis is okay. So what you are going to, uh, what is your uh, strategic vision? So what you are going to achieve next three to five years, okay? And what is the reality now from where you're standing and how you can close the gap? How to close the gap is the real essence of the strategy, okay? So now how to do that? This is not easy, by the way. You are talking about revenue numbers here. You are talking about any other uh, quantity-based or revenue-based. Revenue, or revenue based. So you need to really have uh, the value uh, gap, okay? So you need to close this value gap. So this value gap can be closed with the different themes. Uh, I just give an example here. So you can close, I just put a point, it could be revenue numbers for, for your organization. So we need to have a, a value gap closure, how you, you, will, you are going to drive. This is required because it will be driven by the strategy. And this will help you to understand how, how you are going to achieve the value uh, and value how you are achieve, going to achieve the value gap closure, okay? So in the system, it, it looks something like this. So you can define uh, your strategic projections and then you can define your uh, values, value gap and value gap closures. This is, uh, this will give you the strategy plan. This is outcome of your strategy planning process basically. Now from here, the strategy execution starts, okay? So you def we have to define the strategy map. So this is a, a classic case of strategy mapping. So you have four perspectives, financial, customer, internal and learning growth. So they are, uh, this is how to define your strategies, 
strat your uh, strategic map for for a particular uh, organization so that can be done like this with various customer and uh, customer perspective it could be price uh, quality time whatever okay so uh, in internal you talk about the operations uh, operational excellence you talk about innovation the sales part and then you talk about others like regulatory and uh, social processes okay so we do the strategy mapping uh, then the strategy theme uh, is to to achieve one particular vertical of the solution uh, to uh, for here an example as a shareholder value if you want to achieve that so you need to have a customer satisfaction like internal processes and learning and growth so in the internal processes basically you have like measures targets you have a performance gap and then to close that performance gap you need to have strategic initiatives okay so this is this is how the balance scorecard is driven okay so in the here you come up with the strategic objectives and then connect everything to the uh, way direct way back to the initiatives okay so this can be done uh, 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 the, the system will enforce you to do that in a, in a step by step way you define the measures and then uh, you can you can use the system uh, to define all the strategic uh, map balance scorecard and some measures so uh, there is one concept called value drivers so value drivers is basically a link between your strategic objective and your measure okay now if you take an example if maximize sales growth is usually almost all the organizations keep as an objective in the in the financial perspective so for to do that you need to increase your volume and uh, uh, so price basically so this is how so these are value drivers also can be uh, uh, kept into the, the the planning the process so this will help you how to optimize a particular uh, process uh, particular component of your strategy execution and this also can be taken to the system so it your typical balance scorecard would look like this and then you can monitor it with uh, red yellow green kind of uh, processes okay all these things can be taken care through system uh, this is a structural uh, perfectly done in a structured way in a sequence way okay now i'm i'm talking about step number 3 uh, which is initiative uh, initiative management this is uh, from pmi the picture is from pmi so basically uh, you take up any organization you have project based organization if you take so the primary is how to define your project and how to define your operations how these two gets done together to achieve your strategy okay so now here uh, we are going to uh, achieve our strategies in this way uh through projects and processes okay now for that uh, if, if this has to be integrated with your strategy execution if, if it is separate then it's always a problem that what initiative is getting executed how the uh, the strategy is driving a particular initiative is driving to a, a strategy a strategic objective it's always a question so there is a step structured way how to do these initiatives in the step by step uh, way Uh, milestones and uh, you can define what are the objectives are in, involved in this and then it can be also monitored properly by, uh, by by the initiative reviews you do the analysis and what is happening the recommendation and recommended actions so the step by step way we can do it for the initiative uh, ma management okay so the, the whole pmo can be defined the initiatives can be classified into program or portfolios now you can have performance of individual program or a portfolio so this can this can this can be managed very very efficiently uh, through the through the system and this how it, it should be structured okay strategy in action okay. strategy in action is everything okay now what what we are going to do is you need to really do the alignment here in alignment you have business units the corporate unit and then you have support units then you have uh, business units uh, within the business units you have support units then you have board of directors customers suppliers kind of thing so all these components of the organization has to be integrated aligned so that uh, everybody uh, the whole uh, entity goes uh, in, a, in a strategic direction now how how this is done it's not easy and it is not done in 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 the one one go so this has to be done in a, in a proper way so it all depends uh, what kind of uh, alignment between sbus should be there it's it's all depend on a type of organization okay 
So it could be uh, independent organizations or uh, identical organizations like portal chain, or it could be completely uh, in independent organizations. So based on that, you do the alignments. So the process uh, integration is, to the strategy is very crucial. So especially this process integration comes into the internal perspective, where the, in internal perspectives, you all your business processes can be mapped into the internal perspective uh, themes. And then you just uh, connect them to uh, individual process. Maybe it's a high level process or it's a low level process. Then finally, you know exactly what is happening with the alignment. Finally, uh, you do the people alignment. So that's the ultimate thing actually. So you need to get aligned uh, after the processes. So you need to align with the people incentives. So usually in the strategy uh, execution implementation projects, if you reach to uh, to the incentive stage, that means you more or less it's in a good shape. So it, it's done properly, okay. But this has to be continuously tested and uh, adopted so that uh, it's a, it's a, it, it takes care of its own optimization in the strategy execution, okay. So all these things can be done through system, a systematic way uh, are, 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 can be done so that the system will drive you how to do alignments of individual processes. Uh, and then you can also know the alignment index so that you can keep on measuring how this uh, alignment process is going on on uh, and, day and basis. So people should be really uh, take up the, the, the strategy execution uh, based on their KPIs and they should be able to execute in the shop floor or whatever you're talking about. Now, uh, uh, as part of this, the individual's uh, performance can be taken up. So employee performance, can be taken up like individual performance or a team performance or 360 degree review performance and total. And this can be connected to your balance scorecard. So that is the ultimate thing which you can do it. Okay. The strategy reviews uh, meetings, this is a standard uh, slide. Okay. So you will have operational reviews and strategy reviews and strategy testing and adoption meetings also. So these meetings are very important. We should never mix up strategy review with operational review. I know uh, we are every organization is tempted to do the operational reviews very frequently and they will be happy to do. Strategy review is everything. Uh, to execute strategies, you need to have strategy reviews. Okay, So it's preferably monthly or sometimes you do it in a quarterly basis. If it is a larger organization uh, with multiple locations, you do it quarterly. In a, in a, but our approach is to support a monthly review meeting. And of course, testing and adopting is usually once in a year, or if there is any emerging strategy, okay, so it will be done uh, on a regular basis uh, whenever it is required, okay. So, uh, uh, any classical agenda uh, for uh, strategy review process, it looks like this: you have a three-hour uh, meeting where you talk about the key theme, and then uh, drive the the whole presentation, and you talk about the rest of the topics. Okay, and then you need to communicate and take actions. So these actions taken uh, in the in the strategy reviews is very important. Now, how you monitor these actions is the very important part. So usually, what happens in the strategy review, we identify some actions. In the next review meeting, we talk about what are the actions you have taken. How you monitor through emails, through the communicating the minutes of meeting. This is where the systems approach will be very much helpful. So now, uh, if we look at this, I'll talk about the action. If we look at this, how you do the meetings is very important. If you do the meetings, we present uh, pre the, the individual theme owner or objective owner, keep on presenting it, somebody taking notes, making it. So the solution driven approach is the meeting will be done through system, okay? So you have a particular objective. You can see the, everything related to the objective, uh, the, the measures, the progress, the initiatives, everything is there. Now, this particular slide is talking about initiative story. So for a particular initiative, you have a story. You can write what is, a, what, is a, what is happening here and what is your recommendation. How can you keep them into track, okay? So likewise, there could be uh, initiative dashboards. You can review the performance, what is happening, and this is can directly connected to any system. And uh, you have a theme story. So if you, how the whole theme is working, so you can review about themes, okay? And you also review about objectives. This is one of the very important parts, review of the objective performance. So you can have uh, your objective uh, performance recorded here before the meeting, 
then in the meeting we review and then leave action points what we are going to do okay and so this is action points so now uh, in the meeting itself you can raise an action points so that this will be monitored continuously and then you can also uh, see what is the uh, when this action message uh, gets completed you can you can very happily say that this is done or you can send the reminders you can attach documents a particular strategy document and then uh, the then email or messages can be sent to particular individuals so this action messages is very important because you don't have to write write it up and then uh, you can also uh, you can you don't have to write it up and then monitor it manually through emails or something everything can be done through here all your action messages can be seen what are open and what are closed okay so uh, overall organizational performance can be seen in the strategy reviews okay so basically there are six categories what we have made like we call it as an sfo performance that means uh, the the strategy focus organization uh, how you do the assessments uh, this is like a readiness is a balanced scorecard implementation uh, assessment you do it in the beginning and then do it in every quarter so this you achieve uh, you can have a score for this uh, for the sfo performance at the organization level uh, i will show you one slide for that the balanced scorecard performance that means you have weightages for your objectives and uh, measures then you can consolidate for individual business unit or the group company then you can see overall score how it is performing so this score can be a benchmark for a next review so uh, so on so forth so uh, then uh, the whole rest of the th the, the performance will be talking about uh, uh, projects so enterprise project management uh, or epmo performance so how this project management performance is going to happen so are we really defining the uh, scope statement for everything work background structure everything so this the process of project management is done in epmo performance initiative performance means how these strategic initiatives combine together adding value in a, in in a, in a group of initiatives so uh, so there could be weightages for each initiative based on your strategic agenda uh then consolidated score by by division by organization can be done so this will give you the overall initiative performance the bottom two are like portfolio and uh, program so if you are defining your uh, initiatives into groups uh, and into portfolios you can see the overall performance by weighted scores so this is this all things can be done through in a systematic way so this is a assessment every manager can get it they can they can put the scoring into that and you will see the final sfs score readily available and then you have you can you can see the scores here uh, initiative you can see all the initiatives weightages you can do in a club uh, in a consolidated way and then you can get the scores automatically okay then you have a pmo process uh, how you do uh, what's going on and then a balance scorecard so you have all the balance scorecard measures and objectives so you have weightages you can get the consolidated final organizational score okay so i think uh, this is about main main part of the presentation now we talk about the technical some technology uh, part so uh, in align in automating the processes uh, is very important because if you don't automate it it takes a lot of time and it's a, a, any change in the strategy which is going to help you have a big problem so eventually some part of the overall strategy execution gets slowed down or maybe it get uh, delayed or maybe they they will, they will stop using the framework so there are three parts where usually the data flow the bottom part is very important the measures the measures need to be automatically populated uh, with the actuals especially the reason is if you if the people start collecting the data there is a chance of error there is a lot of time taken and people put whatever that data they want to put okay so it's it's always a problem okay it's always a questionable there should not be any question in the measured data in the balance scorecard that is very very important if they if we, usually in my experience in in many meetings with the one manager we talk about a uh, measured data and uh, other manager say no no this data is not correct this is usually have a, this is a usual problem in any company so majority of the debate goes to uh the measured data so now if you have a mechanism and the system it can take the data automatically which is agreed by everybody and then for example you have in the in the revenue data in the uh, enterprise resource planning you have a product group regions kind of thing so you just collect the data and populate it to particular measure there is no question nobody is involved in this so there is no question of debate 
and this can be done automatically every month, something like that, based on your reporting frequency. So this way, so you have a big, you'll really save a lot of things, and also people will be, people can use dashboards and reports so that you know they are aware continuous on a continuous basis. So this is one of the very important uh, uh, aspect of the overall automation of the process. And sometimes you know if you have using a special a project management software, okay, usually if there is a large, larger projects, a number of people involved in the projects and uh, there are too many projects. So there is a possibility that you use a separate PMO software. So that also can be integrated so that you can see the consolidated view for the initiatives. And then finally, uh, the strategic projections, like you have a strategy numbers, okay? You have budgeting, of course, uh, whether we like it or not, budgeting is one of the most important process in the company and uh, nobody likes it basically. Okay, so this budgeting process needs number from strategy projections. So this comes from the strategy planning process and this is connected to again operations. Now this part also can be taken up through, uh, through the system. Okay, so uh, uh, you can have an integration protocols. Uh, uh, the system supports any kind of protocol, the REST APIs and uh, XML protocol, the file transfers, anything. So this protocol usually, you know, it can be very easy to connect to multiple systems and then get the data automatically, okay? So uh, in the last step, there are some processes which are very important like enablers, but almost, you know, they don't have any system to use it. So strategy management tool need to be included in that. So as a part, uh, the, as a part we talk about risk and compliance is one of the key area and that, that there could be other uh, uh, areas where we can also put up some, some kind of the systems to get that it is integrated to the strategy. Okay, so risk and compliance is one key area where we can talk about uh, uh, top uh, important uh, uh, performance criteria is the risk. So you must have a risk uh, approach. So uh, all the risk uh, objectives, uh, this uh, uh, we can identify the risks from the strategic uh, risks. It's operational risks. These can be linked to your strategic objectives, and then you can measure the. You can keep on monitoring it you know, as a part of the strategy system itself. You don't have to leave it to the strategy risk managers kind of thing. You can have a budget for that risks also, and then you can manage the budgets also towards that. Okay, so uh, we talk about uh, uh, the compliance part. Uh, the, the risks can be maintained in the in the in the solution. Uh, and then it can be and connected to a particular object, particular division and particular balance scorecard. So you can see what is the likelihood and consequence. So finally, then you can see heat maps kind of things you can generate it and you can have budget allocated uh, for this. And then uh, the budget uh, can be uh, done. Uh, the expenses can be recorded uh, as a part of the overall uh, process. And then you can monitor how this. And then for once this, if it is, if this risk is no more risk, then we can we can simply just eliminate this risk from the list. Okay. So that's how it is. And the, these risks also can be connected to the action items. So that in the action items, anything related to the strategy can be taken up. Okay. So you can have since you have the data, you can have all the dashboards, whatever required. So in the left, you can see the risks. You click on the risks. In each risk, you will find what is the status. Okay, so this can be customized based on the need usually. Uh, and the, you have like a compliance. So you define all the compliance activities required and when it is going to be met. Okay. So if any particular compliance is required and which is not available, then you need, this can be, this can be in a project. This project can be a part of the initiative. And all these things can be uh, you have a starting point, starting date and end date and reminders. All these things can be taken up because the compliance is nowadays, it's very important because of this global pandemic kind of uh, disruptions. So you need to really take care of the compliance part that can be done, okay? And then all the compliance related activities can be uh, monitored closely. And then uh, you, uh, you take up all uh, the compliance activities uh, through action items can be done. It typically the balance scorecard look like this. And then uh, you have overall balance scorecard per performance can be seen in the bottom, okay? Uh, so you have measures, uh, targets and actuals. 
then you have weightages for each uh, measures and objectives. Then finally, the consolidated performance of a particular balance scorecard can be seen. And this can be seen through system, systematic. Of course, this slide is from Excel. This you can, you can directly see it from the uh, system. Okay. Uh, of course, the governance uh, is very important. This is a very simplified governance structure, what we usually follow. So you have a steering committee where you have a senior managers who are working. Then our uh, client, the balance scorecard uh, systems implementation. So you have a team uh, we to work. And then the client leadership team, of course, they support it. And then from our side, we have our uh, consultants and then uh, team. So this, uh, we work in, a, in this seven-step approach uh, to execute the strategies. Yeah. So I think uh, we are done with the, uh, with, the, with the webinar. So before closing, uh, what we do is, this slides tell you what we are, going, we are doing. Uh, so we have uh, solutions for logistics excellence, supply chain excellence, enterprise resource planning, and also strategy. So I would like to take up the questions and uh, any answer, any, any, any uh, take up any feedback from your side. Uh, I will be very happy to do that. I think uh, we are well on the time, so 45 minutes. Okay, so the well, rest of that, maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, we can talk about uh, questions. And if there is any particular thing, we will definitely will take up. Yes. Uh, so uh, Deep, are you, can you, can you take up from here? Yeah, you need to. Okay, so uh, I would like to. Uh, I I made you Khalid the host, so maybe you can you can you can take up questions and uh, do some stuff. Well, thank you, Mr. Khadar. And we are now going to begin the question and answer session. And as a reminder, you can still submit your questions through the questions pane, or you can also raise a hand through the reactions menu on the bottom of your Zoom screen. And uh, let us uh, start with the first question that we have today. So we have a question from uh, Mr. Ramesh. So the question is, uh, is the briefed methodology, so the balanced scorecard methodology useful for the organizations uh, who have not implemented the BSC as a strategy execution tool? So that is the first question from Mr. Ramesh. So we can take up this question. Usually what happens is uh, uh, the senior leadership, uh, they are aware of balanced scorecard, okay? So uh, there must be a, 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 some kind of performance management mechanism in the organization. Okay, so this methodology is definitely can be implemented uh, in the organizations, uh, which uh, where balance scorecard framework is not implemented uh, or they're not using the framework. So this is a very simple way to align what they're doing uh, with, the, with the approach. So it's definitely doable. So what we do is as, as we explained in the steps, so we, in the assessment part, we take up the total assessment uh, in the initially. Uh, then we convert this into a strategy map and balance scorecard uh, without changing anything. It's, it's from the client side. So all these can be combined and then you will, you will, uh, you will, uh, achieve, you, you will get a balance scorecard and then complete uh, performance management can be uh, driven uh, to, uh, towards the initiatives and objectives kind of thing. And then finally, you have a, a, we can establish a review mechanism uh, in the uh, uh, the strategy execution approach. So some part of your overall performance process will be changed to balance scorecard framework. Slowly they can adopt it. So that's how we are doing with multiple clients. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. And uh, we have the next question from Ms. Jotsna. And the question is, can the implementation of BSC framework be done remotely? And if so, how? Yeah, yeah, this is very important. And nowadays, it's a travel is a very big problem. The systems implementation is a, is a key challenge. So this is uh, remotely as yes, possibly done, provided there is a good uh, coordination from the client, uh, client side. 
So you you have a good uh, leadership team who is taking care of the overall performance management or a strategy execution. So we can happily do that uh, remotely. This is can be done uh, remotely. That's how we are doing with the current clients. There is a project manager involved at the client side. So he is responsible to do all activities on behalf of us. Okay. So we drive them the methodology uh, know-how and also the systems know-how. We built it and we align with their IT team to establish uh, the integration protocols with the for the measuring. And then since this system is about cloud enabled uh, platform, so it's very really, very easily integrated uh, can be integrated to any 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 solutions in the ERP or line of business solution or uh, any other uh, Excel based system uh, solution or manual inputs. So you can, it's, it's very easily doable. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And the one last question that we have is uh, from Mr. Zahrul. And the question is can the BSE be integrated uh, to the existing systems such as ERP and so on? Yeah, yeah. You, that's right. I think we, we already discussed this point. Uh, so, uh, uh, this system, the FRU strategy, can be integrated to any ERP. Okay, so it's basically a REST, a REST API protocol. We can use it if they're if they're giving the data in a file format or in a text format or uh, in XML format. Okay, JSON format. So these all all the things can be integrated very easily, and the data can be pulled up and uh, do the integration. And we usually do this as part of the the implementation. Okay, thank you. And I would request all the participants to please, uh, you know, uh, post any questions that you may have. So uh, we will be coming to the closing of the session, if not. So if any, any, any particular point you would like to discuss uh, as part of this presentation, any, 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 any one area where you are more interested to know more, that also can be, uh, can be discussed. Yeah. Yes, definitely. If you can raise your hand uh, through the reactions pane uh, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, so we would unmute you and you can definitely discuss. All right. So I don't see any more questions coming in. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so thank you everyone and we appreciate your time for being here with us. And if you would like to know more about us and our solutions, you can visit our website at datalabsindia.com or reach out to us on the, number, on the numbers mentioned on the website. Please be informed that you will also receive an email within 24 to 48 hours with the link to view a recording of today's webinar. And also you'll be given a feedback form. Please provide your valuable feedback, which would help us do better the next time. So on behalf of Data Labs India and our presenter, the CEO of Data Labs India, Mr. Sheikh Abdul Khadr, thank, thank you once you. again for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.